does your business have competition? Did you answer no to that? You need to think again because you're probably costing your business sales. Competition doesn't have to be scary. Find out what to do about the big C on this episode of Authentic Selling TV. Competition. It's a word that kind of made me do a double take when I entered, when I left corporate America and entered into the online world because I kept hearing all of these coaches say, my business doesn't have competition and there's enough to go around. And while I don't disagree with that, we got to have a little bit different relationship with competition. Now, in the corporate world, we know we got competition, right? Like, you know, uh, if you're selling pharmaceuticals, you know, there are lots of drugs for type 2 diabetes. Your drug may be one of them. There may be others. If you're selling lumber, right? I mean, you can buy pressure treated wood from GP or LP or like there's competition. There's competition for toilet paper. So in the online world, it, it, it kind of like hurt my brain for a minute when everybody was saying there's enough business to go around, which again may be true. And I don't have competition and I don't want to think about competition because I don't want to be in a competition for business. Totally acknowledge that. Understand what you're saying. And we got to go a little bit deeper in a relationship with competition because you are missing an opportunity to sell more stuff. Now, let me be really clear. What I am not going to say in this video is that you should find out the competition's weaknesses and hammer those on. Or you should talk about your competition on social media. Or that you could say, well, they do it this way, but we do it this way and it's better. My toilet paper has three plies. Theirs has one. Can you imagine? No. Yes, that is a way to sell, but mm, it makes me feel gross. It actually makes me feel icky, sleazy, slimy, gross, crusty, messy, rusty, dusty. So let's don't do that. However, in that line of what we're not going to do, it is true that your product or service has features that you have chosen to include for a reason. And in the online world, we create our products and services. So whether you've got lifetime uh, enrollment or lifetime access, or you've got, uh, 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 what is the word? Unlimited support. You can email me as much as you want or whatever. Those are features that do separate you from the competition. But I want to talk about competition and your relationship to it at a different level. First of all, Competition doesn't have to be someone else selling a similar product or service. In today's very active world, we are in competition for people's attention. So there are three big steps of selling. How people know your business exists, right? It's, it's your visibility plan, how they know your business exists. Step number two is how they engage with your business and decide, yeah, I might trust them with my business. I need to learn a little bit more about it. And then how we close the sale, right? And so in order to even get on someone's radar that your business exists, you are in competition for their attention, not necessarily with other people doing the same thing, but with their life. And I don't know about y'all, but I hear people say all the time they are short on two things, money and time, and time they can't make more of. So if you are trying to get the word out about your incredible thing, and people have their cell phone up and they have their watch going off and they have their dogs outside their door who need attention and they've got their friends and they've got their family, their mom who just had knee surgery and they've got their husband who's not feeling well and their daughter who needs to go to the doctor. I just literally told you my whole day right here, by the way. Like there's a lot going on. I'm probably not going to have the time to scroll through Instagram today or attend your great free thing to even know that your business exists. So we are in a competition. We're in competition to get people's attention, to say, yes, my business exists. Yes, I can help you. And we're in competition in that step one of visibility, right? So competition is not just about other people sell, selling a similar product or service. You're also in competition for people's buying power or their dollars. Now, that sounds cold and harsh when I put it that way, but people have so much money, right? People, people get a paycheck, 
They have money that they spend on their mortgage. They have money that they spend on makeup. They have money they spend on food, school, all the things, right? And so when they run out of money, they're likely not going to buy from you, right? Like, I mean, let's, let's be real. So you're in competition for their buying power. And so I'll slow this down a little bit and think about this. Number one, you are in competition for people's attention. If they don't know you exist, it is impossible for them to buy from you. And if they are always short on time, which the majority of people say they are, how do we break through their busy lives and say, hey, I'm here, I can help you. Number two, you're in competition for their money. Not in a cold way, but in a, they have obligations that they, ha that they have chosen to spend their money on or that they have to spend their money on to meet their basic needs. Food, shelter, uh, maybe a, a, a emotional well-being, physical well-being, whatever. So you're in competition for their, uh, the, their buying power. I am not suggesting that anyone should ever fail to pay their mortgage and pay you. Not what I'm suggesting at all. But again, you're in competition for where and how they spend their money. And then, yeah, it's true. You are in competition in some ways with other people selling a similar product. Uh, let's, take a, let's take running a business, for example. There are a lot of skills that you need in order to run a business successfully. You need to have a great product. So there's product creation. Uh, you need to understand your ideal target market, right? So there, 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 there's a, if you don't know how to do that, you gotta learn how to do it. You need to understand uh, how you're gonna market, how you're gonna sell. Are you gonna use Facebook ads? Are you gonna use Instagram ads? I guess that's sort of the same thing. Are you gonna be on TikTok? Are you going to speak? Are you gonna do videos? Are, you know, so there are all these things that you can learn, right? And, 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 and so if you were starting a business today and I said, here are the 18 things, and I don't know that they're 18, but here is this number of things that you need to learn in order to run a successful business, that can feel really overwhelming. What order do I do these things in? Uh, what order is, is important that shortcuts the time it takes me to be successful? And this is where a lot can go wrong in the online world because People buy everything all at once and they implement everything all at once and then they don't know what goes wrong. That's a different conversation for a different time. But the fact is 100% yes, it doesn't matter what you're selling, you're in competition. If you're selling to corporate, you're in competition the, in the same way. You're in competition for people's time right? If you've ever cold called a business, you, you know, let's take again the world I came from, which is pharmaceutical sales. Doctors are busy. Pa doctors don't want patients to see them spending time with their reps, taking time away from their patients. Doctors want to get home to their family. So you're in competition for their time. You're in competition for Lots of things is the point here. So if you believe that there is no competition, you likely are going to have some issues in your business. One of those big issues is people are not going to know your business exists. And what do we say about that? If they don't know your business exists, it is impossible for someone to buy from you. So, so how do we solve this? Well, first of all, number one is we have to change your relationship with competition. I, we don't need to look at competition as a way to go in and manipulate people for their time, manipulate people for their money, or, uh, you know, sell them oceanfront property and give them a retention pond. That's not what I'm talking about. Or have them not pay their mortgage, right? Like, not saying that. But we do need to realize that our customer's state of mind and state of life and state of work is busy. We do need to realize that the majority of the people, 99% of people are not in that upper 1%. And so they do work off of budgets or they do work off a finite amount of money. And so we can't just say you need to buy all of these 18 things and do them all really, really well. So what do we do with that? The first thing, the first thing, and this is so easy, going to feel so good, so empowering, is make sure that anything you put out has the kiss seal of approval. We call this the Prince tool. I just want your extra time and your kiss, right? We call it keep it super simple. 
and, and, and I'm fascinated when I tell people this and they're like, yeah, but I sell to educators. And so I don't want to oversimplify what I'm doing or yeah, but what I do is really technical and I don't want to oversimplify it. Pause. I'm not suggesting you dumb things down. Not what I'm saying, but I am suggesting that in, that didn't snap well. In order to get somebody's attention like that, when they've got their phone, when they've got their watch, their dogs, their husband, their kids, their wife, their spouse, their girlfriend, their boyfriend, their emotional support human, their church, their kids' school, like all the things they need to do in a day, we don't need them scratching their head saying, huh, this, this person on Instagram looks really cool. I don't know what they mean here. They might be able to help me. I don't know if they're selling anything. Nobody's gonna do that. As a matter of fact, statistics show that you have eight seconds or less before somebody decides if they wanna continue reading or if they want to move on. Eight seconds when they or less when they hit your website, eight seconds or less, probably less than that, when they hit your social media feed, eight seconds or less before they decide, yep, I'm tuning in for this or I'm out of here. And so in that eight seconds, we gotta be super simple. It's why every video that we do starts the, almost every video starts a really pointed question, right? You can tell pretty immediately, do you want this? Do you not want this? Great. There's another reason for that. It has to do with sales psychology. We'll talk about in a later video. The point is, even if you sell something really complex, even if you sell something that needs to have a face-to-face -face conversation, even if you sell something where you're like, these are the contraindications for this product or service, you've got to get your foot in the door, whether that foot is on their phone or whether that foot is in the physical door. And we don't do that by being complicated. We do that by breaking our message down into a bite-sized chunk, something really, really small. It's how you form great webinar topics. It's how you form great YouTube topics. It's how you form great bite-sized chunks of content is you break it down into bite-sized pieces. That sounds ridiculous. But our goal when we are trying to do step one, have people know our business exists, is not to solve the problem. Our goal, it's a win if they're like, oh yeah, that redhead that's got that really wonky sounding accent, I think she does something about selling and helps people close customers and make money. Great, that's a win for me. I have won if you've gotten that much from what I do. Your first interaction with me. And sometimes that doesn't happen on the first interaction. It may take seven interactions before somebody's like, yep, I got it. She's a really great videographer. I remember she's always posting about this. So repetition helps break through that competition for people's attention. But the, the content that you put out that is meant to draw people into your business needs to have that kiss seal of approval. Keep it super simple. It needs to pass the KISS test. If you're seeing it, ask yourself, if I'm seeing this for the first time, do I know what this means or do I have to think too much? We need to make sure that the content that we put out addresses this step of business. We need to make sure that while the dogs are outside, while the kid's texting, while you're doing all the things, that if it happens to pop up on their phone or if they happen to hear a clip of you talking, they're like, oh yeah, that's cool. I'm gonna put that in the back of my brain for later and maybe come back to it. They won't come back to it without us reminding them to come back to it. That's not the point. The point is we need to be memorable. And the way we do that is by being super simple. Break things down into the smallest bite-sized chunk you can. So just like on these videos, to use this as an example, like the whole point of this channel is to teach you to sell without being icky, sleazy, slimy, gross, custom, musty, rusty, dusty. And that means that, um, why do you want to learn to sell? Because you want to make more money and have more customers, right? So we help you find and close customers without being icky, sleazy, slimy, gross, crusty, messy, rusty, dusty, if you want to boil it down. So I say that over and over and over because repetition matters. It's really simple. Find and close customers. If you are in the market to learn how to find and close customers, you don't have to think about that, right? It's like, oh yeah, I need that. It's also one of the reasons that I don't say sell all the time. Because if you've got all the things coming at you and you're like, I'm gonna teach you how to sell, it's like, yeah, I don't need that. What I need is customers. 
So you want to drill this down into a you to a to a to a bite-sized something, what you do, that passes the KISS test. Keep it super simple. And then you want to talk about that on the repeat. Now, what you do may be super complicated, but the way into what you do is not super complicated. It also could be that the way in addresses what the person thinks their biggest problem is. I'll give you an example. So career coaches, lots of times, you know, let's say that I've jumped from job to job to job and I just want to find my dream job, right? Well, you may know as a career coach, actually, maybe there's a you problem here or not problem, but opportunity. There's a, there's a you issue here that, you know, you're always unhappy at jobs or maybe we need to do some mindset work or whatever. Telling someone they're wrong does not close sales. So saying, you may think it's your job, but it's actually you, honey. We got to control those thoughts. Yeah, no. So, so, so the way to slow that down and break that down could be the way in is talking about a career and being unhappy in a career and all the problems that, that your ideal customer is having in the moment. The solution may be mindset work, changing the way you think about it, all the things, but the way in is super simple. They don't have to think too hard about it. So step one of changing your relationship with competition is understanding that you were in competition for people's time, you were in competition for people's money or buying power, and you're in competition uh, for other people who do the same thing that you do, right? So it's not just about, oh, I'm going to take business from this person. Mm -mm, no, that's gross. You're in competition for all these things. And you need to have a strategy for how we address all those things. So if you're in competition for people's time, we use the KISS test. Keep it super simple. Break it down. Bite-sized chunk. Is there a question that you can ask? Is there a thing you can say on the repeat? We help you find and close customers. Great. Break it down bite size. That passes the KISS test. The second thing that we want to do is let, let, we're going to move from step one into step two, which is have people trust you or have, uh, I call it engagement. So we sort of disrupt the scroll if you're talking about social media or we give people kind of a, wait, what did they just say moment? And, and we can do that by getting a little bit more technical, not a lot but by being a true expert of our products and services. So my neck's itching y'all. I'm going to scratch it because it's itching. Uh, so when I was a pharmaceutical sales rep, I had a regional sales manager who said to me, we expect for our reps to be experts on the disease state that their, their drug that they're selling helps. We expect them to be experts on what our drug does and what it doesn't do, who it's for, who it's not for, and what the competitions does. And if you're selling something, it's a good idea to know what the other alternatives are out there. Not so you can say, if you go with them, the less expensive one, you're going to regret it, but so you can see how incredible what you're offering is. So that you can highlight without pointing fingers that lifetime access is a great feature. We've gotten so used to saying things in the online world like lifetime access or a Facebook group or nobody wants that stuff, y'all. Nobody wants that. I do not want another freaking Facebook group. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with Facebook groups. I'm saying I don't want another one. I don't want your incredible emails in my inbox. I have 62 text messages literally right now that I need to respond to. I don't want that. So what? can your email do for me? What can your text message do for me? What can your Facebook do for me? What can unlimited access do for me? And there's a reason, hopefully, that you chose to af offer unlimited access, their lifetime access. There's a reason that you chose to offer a Facebook group. And if your answer is, well, that's what everybody else does, that's a bad answer. Go back to the drawing board and say, I like this Facebook group because it allows you to bring, bring problems to me that I can troubleshoot in real time. It allows us to connect. It allows us not to feel alone. That's a reason. Do other people offer that? 
It's interesting. Look at what other people are selling. Not to say, oh, that Kendrick over there doesn't offer that, but I do. But just to say, I offer this so that you can. You see the difference here? We're not using what people's stuff against them. We, we, are, we are understanding what's in our market and why the features that we choose to offer are there. Let me give you another example. So one of the things I do when I work one-on-one -on -one with people is we spend about six hours together, give or take, in the beginning. Whether that's broken up into two, three-hour calls, whether that's a VIP day, and nobody wants to give me six hours. People are short on two things, money and time. I don't, they don't want to spend six hours with me. I got a lot to do, right? And it's not always six hours, but I'm using this as an example. But that six hours allows me to understand your business at a level that a lot of consultants don't take the time to get to know. It allows me to customize a strategy for you. So I just spoke to a woman who's got these big goals. And I said, you know, what we're going to do in a, in a, in a three-hour call is I'm going to create an entire plan for you. I'm going to ask you a lot of questions. And from that plan, we're going to have a to-do list. In quarter one, we are going to do these things. And we're going to check them off as we go. And we're going to have metrics that we measure so we can make sure those are working. And then in quarter two, we're going to do these things. That six-hour call allows me to create the best plan I know to create for you to find more customers and close more customers. So you might work on work one on one with somebody else who doesn't do that. I'm not going to say all the other coaches out there don't give you their time. Maybe they don't need that time that time. Maybe that's just how I work. That doesn't matter. What matters is I tell you why it's included. This should start to sound familiar to you. It should start to feel like benefits because that's what it is. So how do we change our relationship with competition? Number one, realize that you have competition. You are in competition for people's time. You are in competition for people's money. The way we deal with time, it does, does it pass the kiss test? Break it down. Keep it super simple. Another reason to do this, besides the eight seconds that you have, look, let's count eight seconds. Ready? Go. There you go, eight seconds. Look, that's how long you have. I think that was right, they, they don't click, but close enough. That's how long you have. So it's gotta be simple, right? It's gotta be simple. The other reason is weed. Yeah, weed, Mar marijuana, marijuana. What do I mean by marijuana, by weed? Real Simple Magazine did a study in 2012, 2013, something, somewhere along there about women in time. And in that study, they said that when someone is multitasking, they have the same brain capacity as someone who is high from smoking weed. So let's think about this. You got eight seconds, which we know is really quick, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you got a whole bunch of copy there, it's not gonna get read. And if I'm multitasking, I have the same brain capacity as somebody who's high from smoking weed. So I am not going to comprehend it super well, probably. That's why this pillar matters. That's why this visibility pillar, or if people don't know you exist, they can't buy from you matters. It's one of the biggest problems in the online world. Uh, we, and I did this. We think that we can just put up a website, put, you know, people used to call it, we've hung out our shingle. Where's the business? Doesn't work like that, y'all. Gosh, I wish it did. Doesn't. So we've got to go out and, and, and say to our people, we're here. But we gotta, we, it's got to pass the KISS test. Keep it super simple. And then within that, we've got to compete for the buying power. And the buying power needs to say why this matters. Why this matters. Why did I choose to add these features? So I'm going to give you a challenge. If you're a coach or a consultant or a course creator, I want you to ask yourself, why is this module added in? How to write a sales page? Why did I add that? Because nobody goes to bed dreaming about writing a kick-ass sales page. I don't think. I don't think. Maybe. But, but most people don't. Why did you add the Facebook group? Why did you add the unlimited access or the lifetime access? Why is that there? Because then you start to justify. Not that we need to justify. But you start to justify to yourself why you're charging what you're charging. And to other people, when they have some extra money and they're trying to find a problem to solve, oh, 
I see how the Facebook group helps me. Oh, I see how the, the email helps me. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And then this, this, this third arm over here of what are other people doing in your industry? Again, we're not going to, we're not going to use that. We're not going to be the person that says, oh yeah, well you can work with them if you want to, but they don't give you six hours of their time. We're going to use that to be an expert. We're going to use that to say, these are the options, right? Think about when you, I uh, know. So Hallie and I went to a quinceanera last year and she was not part of the court so she had to she she she, she wore a dress Hallianna doesn't love dresses if you don't know who Hallie Hannah is you're new that's my kiddo uh and Hallianna doesn't love dresses and so we went to like where they sell prom dresses right and I could see the look on Hallianna's face like oh no this is overwhelming there's like sparkly stuff and stuff that shows your midriff and stuff split up the leg and, and no disrespect if that's your taste, it's just not my daughter's style. And so I went to the sales rep and I said, hi, I'm not looking for a dress to wear to prom. Obviously. I mean, I know I look like I could still be going to prom, right? But I'm looking for a dress for my 13 year old to wear to a quinceanera. And my 13 year old doesn't love dresses and this is like, we're already overwhelmed. What's, can you point me to some options? What's the inventory look like for this person? That's the same thing as, and she was great, by the way. We found a dress, Helena looks gorgeous. Uh, it was so fun, whatever. But that's the same thing as knowing what other options are available for your customer to solve this problem, right? Outside of what you offer. You're going to bring so much expertise into the conversation by knowing what's out there. So it's time to change your relationship with competition. Competition isn't a bad thing, but as sure as my hair is red, competition exists and it exists on a multifaceted level. You are in competition for people's time and attention. You are in competition for people's buying power and you are in, you are doing yourself a favor by understanding that they have a choice of which life coach to buy from, which, which course to take, and understanding that why you choose to add whatever you choose to add into your program, the features, need to have a reason so that people can be like, oh yeah, I don't need another Facebook group, but I sure do want a group of business best friends. So, now you know. Competition doesn't have to be a bad thing. Competition is actually understanding your relationship with competition allows you to be a better salesperson. And that allows you to find and close more customers. For more expert tips on how to find and close more customers, ring that bell. Ring that bell. Oh, yeah. And I believe in you and I believe in your business. Bye, y'all.